Hello and welcome to MMM TV. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mel. And in each episode, we'll be bringing you the very latest motorhome road tests, fantastic travel features, loads of technical advice, motorhome accessory reviews, and a bit of fun along the way. lucky on this show aren't we we get to check out a load of vans we are privileged indeed but we haven't seen as many vans as this man it's time for another review from peter vaughan here is a brand new model for 2019 the auto sleeper symbol plus now the symbol has been around as long as i can remember back to the previous generation peugeot boxer but symbol plus takes the back end, the kitchen and bathroom area from the Stanway model, which is discontinued this year, and mates that to the familiar lounge of the Symbol. So unlike the Symbol, this is a long wheelbase Peugeot Boxer, 5.99 metres rather than the Symbol's 5.41 metres. And that does give more space, particularly, as I say, in the back end of the, of the motorhome. This vehicle starts at £53,700, onto which you need to add two and a half grand for the premium pack. And that adds things like the alloy wheels, the awning, solar panel, and a lot more. The USP of this van really is in the kitchen area. Not only is it this nice L-shape arrangement, but the back doors have sort of disappeared. They've been panelled off and there's no access in or out of the vehicle through the rear at all. Now, in terms of equipment, you've got this new can three burner hob with combined oven and grill below. You've got a corner sort of triangular sink there. Quite a lot of light coming into the area too. And then you've got eye level microwave up here. 96 litre fridge, um, plenty of access to that. It's not uh, in a narrow area as often they are. And then useful would have worked top there. And already this kitchen has a decent amount of worktop along the side as well. What's it lacking? Well, there's no cutlery drawer anywhere. Why well, you think there might be a drawer here that's just a little cupboard under the sink. Although there is a nice large pan drawer under the cooker, so that's, that's a definite plus. The corner washroom is a definite advantage over the standard symbol because you've got this fixed corner basin and quite a decent size area in there for showering, using the loo and so on. Storage is just restricted to that little mirrored cupboard at the back and you will need to remember to move the loo roll when you're having a shower because there's no shower curtain but that in itself is a plus because you haven't got one of those horrible clingy curtains sticking to you when you have a shower. When you come out of the shower you've got plenty of storage for all your uh, folded clothes. You've got an illuminated vanity mirror there and this door comes round with another little attachment at the bottom and then the wardrobe door finally closes off the back of the motorhome and turns the whole area into a changing room. Mmm, fresh coffee. And a convenient coffee table too. And this lounge is the classic symbol layout with the single forward-facing travel seat there for, for one rear passenger, a long settee facing the sliding door, and of course, twin swivel cab seats, although this one doesn't go all the way around. There's a step, of course, between the cab and the main living area, but that doesn't matter too much as long as you view the coffee table as being for the two front seats and the main dining table, a freestanding table, as being for the rear seats, probably best to dine sitting side by side on that sofa and enjoying the big view out through the sliding door. At night, the lounge converts easily into two single beds, but the alternative double is rather more complex and requires extra infill cushions. The standard engine here is Peugeot's 2 litre 160 bhp diesel, which is smoother than the Fiat equivalent. However, if you need an automatic, then the base vehicle switches to Fiat 
and this is quite a pricey option. The Symbol Plus makes a useful addition to the Autosleeper range. It's got the typical high-spec Autosleeper van conversion, and to me the layout works better than the original Symbol. It's a pity there's no storage access through the back doors, but then if storage is a big thing for you, you're probably better off with a fixed bed layout, like say the Kingham. But this vehicle is still compact at under six metres long, and it does have that big lounge area and the big kitchen. There's plenty of choice too, in terms of four exterior colours, different fabrics on the inside, and even two wood tones. There's such a diverse selection of accessories at a show like this. It can almost blow your mind. But anyway, here's Geneve with some of the very latest. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but I am actually over 18, and that's what you would have to be if you wanted to buy one of these Gerber Bear Grylls pocket tools, um, which you can get for about £20 at Go Outdoors. I've got the knife in here, as you can see. There's a main blade we've got a main blade there so that one i think is a screwdriver it's also a bottle opener by the looks of it so that's handy there is a pokey thing for poking things we've got a phillips screwdriver in there so flathead phillips and here we've got a summary of all the things that uh, one would need to know out here in the bush first thing relax Take a deep breath and keep a clear head. The mistake that many people make in life or death situations is getting their priorities wrong. So think before you act. The phrase I use to remind myself is, please remember first, protection. Okay. Number one, rescue, water and food. These are the absolute basics you need to survive. And survival now needs to become your number one goal. So here we go, down to business. So I'm back from the woods, as you can see, I've managed to sort myself out with a shelter here. I somehow seem to have acquired a hole in my ground sheet here. Now I've no idea how this happened, nothing to do with the knife, I swear. Um, I met a bear in the woods and next thing the hole was here. But anyway, luckily, because I've read my Bear Grylls tips on survival, um, I know how important shelter and protection is. I've come prepared with this um, repair kit called uh, Storm Short Tough Tape. I'm just going to take my scissors, cut it across. So I'm just going to use my fingers to pull that tight like that. We need to take one side off this, which is easier than it looks, I have to say. One, two, three, on we go. Pull the other side off, over like so. And there we go. Actually, I'm pretty pleased with that. That is definitely going to keep the rain out tonight. And there we have it. My shelter is now ready and prepared for a full night of survival out here in the bush. Stormshore Tough Tape. Find out more information on uh, stormshore.com or you can get it on Amazon for about £5. why I'm wearing a waterproof jacket on such a, a lovely day like today. As you can see, it's a lovely day out here now, but there are, oh my God. Thank you for that. <laughs> so this is the Didder Edrickson jacket from Scandinavian brand uh, Didrickson. They specialize in a range of waterproof products. This is the Ed um, Edda jacket um, and it costs um, $64.99. Now it's supposed to be 100% waterproof, so I think we're going to find out today if that's the case. So we've got waterproof fabric, seems to be doing well so far. Uh, we've got tape seams here to stop me from getting too wet. Uh, we've got a nice zip with a big uh, zipper on it, so that's nice and easy to get hold of. I do have a hood, but there seems little point in putting up that now. 
given the circumstances. Um, the other thing we do have are some nice big pockets um, where you can get rather large packets of sweets etc into those. You can also tuck your hands in like that if you want to avoid getting drenched entirely. Um, what else can we say? It seems to be working. Now one of the challenges of owning a motorhome is when you go somewhere hot, you need to get the airflow going. Open the windows, open the sunroof. This particular model, I think they've got it just right, don't you? Let's check out the latest travel features. Peak District in January. Not, apparently, for the faint-hearted. Good morning from a very snowy and icy Peak District. We stayed here last night at the Waterloo Inn because we were afraid we wouldn't get out once we were in. So we had a lovely night in the pub and now we're off to explore the rest of the Peak District. If I can get out. Right, so we're about to go over Winnitz Pass which is a very narrow and steep pass that goes across from west to east and east to west. It's quite exciting, it's really, really dramatic. Derwent Water, and it's where, during the Second World War, those famous dam busters practiced their low-level flying. Na, 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 na. Fabulous Dovedale, a really lovely limestone gorge. Stepping stones here are quite famous. There's a bit, uh... yeah, I'm not going to risk it. This is quite impressive. <laughs> Now it's time to meet the motorhomers and we're joined by deputy editor of MMM magazine, Rachel Stothert. Rachel, you are quite often the first point of contact for the readers of MMM magazine, aren't you? Yeah, with any sorts of queries as well. It's um, whether they just want to get in touch and tell me about their motorhomes or whether they want to get in touch and tell me about their campsites they've stayed at or they want to submit a feature for the magazine. We do accept lots of features from readers about everything. OK, let's take a look. I'm Valda, this is Terry, and this, uh, this is their Middlesex Mate Troops camper van. Uncle George being a bachelor, we always used to get together and play crib and that, you know, and used to come round the house and we used to go to his house right up until more or less he died. 
and my youngest sister, who lived just down the road from my uncle, she uh, more or less looked after him because she could pop in every day. We were a little bit further, and his only living relative, like his brother, lived in, lives in Australia. When Uncle George died, he just divided his house and all his money between my two sisters and me and my yeah. uncle in Australia. So it was divided into four. And with that, that's what I did. I thought Uncle George knew I always wanted one. <laughs> um, we've had it just before Christmas gone. Yep. Yeah, and um, it's the first one we've ever had. And I think it's wonderful. Didn't like the layout, so um, we had a chat to the owners of the Middlesex Matrix and they said, well, we can fit it out any way you want. When I looked at other camper vans, they had the kitchen in the, in the, to the front. I couldn't, and of course, that's where the seating is, you know, uh, the driving seats and all that. And I looked at it and I thought, well, um, if I'm there cooking and there's somebody sitting beside me in a seat, that would irritate me. So I said, can I have the cooker and sink up the end of the caravan, like where camper van where it is? That made more sense. Every time I looked at the other camper vans, they looked like we were going to get under each other's feet. Loads of cupboard space. I mean, really, half of the cupboards have not even got things in them. There's too much. <laughs> well, I use it, like I say, in the week. So it's something I can use every day if I want to. It's not that big. It goes under a six foot six barrier. So it's something you can use every day. It's got four seats and four safety belts. Because it's the sort of van that you can just get in and go. You know, even if you just want to go down the beach for the day. Because you can cup of tea. I live near the sea, you know, and it's, it's handy, it really is. Just come back from Italy with my two sisters about a fortnight ago. But you've got, you've got the nice warmth and that's the trouble, the summer's too quick. Here and gone, isn't it? Hate the winter. <laughs> I really hate it with a vengeance. This, you know, I said we was at Peterborough and it rained dreadful. I mean, really bad. And, um, we found that we were restricted because we were in the camper van when you got dirty boots, Wellington's clothes and that. But with the awning, um, you can put your Wellington's in the awning, the dog basket, any wet clothes. It's not in the camper. You can spread yourself out. Fairlight Wood, that's in Sussex and that is beautiful up there and it really is in a lovely bluebell wood. Yorkshire, I love Yorkshire and we've been up there a few times, well quite a few times, for about 13 years we used to go up there. Like I said, I'd like to go down the West Country because I'd like to go to the Eden Project. Well, my camper van means to me the freedom to go where you like, when you like and just chill out really you know you really can i mean even if you just go out and sort of stop in a lay by you don't even have to go to a campsite it's it's just to get up and go a bit like when you go on holiday as long as you take your passport and your credit card you can go on holiday <laughs> So Richard, what would you say are the things that um, the first time buyer, the mistakes they might make? Um, they, they, they need to make sure that um, they, whether or not it is for just a tour them, or if it's going to be like with the obvious common thing we do have is where they say they might be taking grandkids, probably not even asked if the grandkids are going to be interested to go, <laughs> go and okay. ride a van suitable for grandkids and the grandkids never even go. So they end up wanting to change it like a year later because they're going to van, which is not really suitable just for two of them. The van built thing is really, um, for me, quite quite interesting. Right. So thinking about um, uh, living space, habitation, yeah. um, what kind of things are people looking for when it comes to kitchen areas? Well, in terms of kitchen areas, they're just looking for work surfaces, um, the size of cookers, how many, you know, how big the ring, how many rings it's got on there, sinks, even whether or not it's even got a drainer. Mm. Um, so it really, it's 
some look for how many sockets are around there because they want to know where they're going to put the kettles. And, um, you know, basic things really. Really nice. How much is one of these new? 55. 55, eh? I love this van. I love this van. It's really lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. But then again, I love everything. You do love everything. I love this van. I love you. I'll tell you someone who doesn't love everything. Oh. The motor Mona. <laughs> Why, oh why, do thousands of apparently right-minded folk get together in a muddy field for the weekend with just a view of a white box outside their windows, when they could be travelling somewhere beautiful and inspirational and scenic? If you own a large American motorhome, then the answer is fairly simple, of course, as the shows are the only place capable of accompanying these monster-raving loony motorhomes, as they tend to follow the shows like a travelling circus. What about everybody else? Why do they all flock to a field with questionable facilities intended for just the occasional use of Victorian agricultural workers? It cannot be just the opportunity to let your canine companions indulge in the odd fight or two every couple of minutes, or let them annoy all those suited Mafia member motorhome salesmen by washing off their newly applied tyre black. Maybe it's a chance for all those Anorak Mobility scooter owners to wreak havoc. Or could it be the entertainment? What an extravagant use of the word that is. Can it get worse than a tribute band? Only if the originals turn up in some cases. Have you noticed that everybody seems to be three sheets to the wind at the entertainment, despite the rather extravagant bar prices? This could possibly be due to all the heavy clinking of carrier bags everyone smuggles in, but leaves without. Then for some, perhaps, it's the seren ranks of new and used motorhomes for sale. I love wandering around the place with my grumpy head on, pointing and gesticulating. Look at the price of that, dear. We paid less than that for our house. We all do it, don't we? And winding up the unforementional mafia-looking salesman with his derogatory comments. A bit of weekend sport. And even allowing for the dog show, the mobility scooter Grand Prix, the questionable entertainment with their cheap drinks and the chance to whinge at the price of motorhomes, this is surely not enough to draw so many of us from so far afield for a spot of mud wrestling. There are of course the retail thrills and spills whilst wandering around the stalls and stands. Were you going to buy so much quality stuff you didn't know you needed and for so little outlay? Not that we've actually found a use for any of it. Last year, we somehow found ourselves at the Lincoln Motorhome Show, and all we brought was a bag of German sausages and a bum bag that converts into a rucksack. We've been looking for one of those for years and worth every mile in the motorhome traffic jams. Surely the reason why us motorhome masochists keep on congregating at these shows is that they are simply an odd combination of our instinctive needs, meeting friends, that sense of belonging in a tribal setting, and a convenient venue for a bit of simple fun. So don't beat yourself up if you feel guilty about getting these strange, inexplicable compulsions to attend these shows. Nobody's going to judge your cultural health here. Just relax and embrace the inner geek. We all have one somewhere. Well, that's it for another episode of MMM TV. And all that's left to say is Happy Christmas. What's that I hear you say? That doesn't look very Christmassy. Well, Christmas is here. Too much food. Too much wine, star on the tree will shine. The family's here to die.